Cornelius was an officer in the Roman army who lived in Caesarea. He and everyone in his house worshipped God. Cornelius helped other people and he always prayed to God. One afternoon, Cornelius saw an angel of God in a vision which frightened him. The angel said to him, God has heard your prayers and he has seen how you help others. Then the angel told Cornelius to send for a man named Peter, who was in the city of Joppa. So Cornelius sent two of his servants and one soldier to Joppa. The next day, as the servants and the soldier were nearing the city, Peter went up on the roof of the house to pray. Peter saw a vision of something like a large sheet coming down from heaven. In the sheet were all kinds of animals, reptiles, and birds. A voice said to him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter said. I have never eaten anything that is unclean or not used for food. Again, a voice said to him, God has made these clean. Do not call them unclean. This happened three times, and then the whole thing was taken up into heaven. Peter tried to understand what the vision meant. Then Cornelius' men arrived at the gate. They explained that Cornelius had seen a vision, and an angel instructed him to send for Peter. So the next day, Peter went with the men to Caesarea. When Peter got to Cornelius' house, he explained to Cornelius that God does not consider some people to be better than others. God had sent good news to the Israelites. Jesus is the Lord of all. Peter said, everyone who believes in Jesus will have their sins forgiven. As Peter said this, the Holy Spirit came down on those who heard the message, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles or non-Jews too. The Jewish believers were amazed. Cornelius, his friends, and his relatives were baptized in the name of Jesus, and Peter stayed with them for a few days. God showed Peter that just as there is no clean or unclean food in Christ, there are no clean and unclean people. God calls believers to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they are or where they come from. Jesus is the Lord of all. Good morning. After Jesus rose from the grave and returned to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to live in his disciples and give them power. They used that power to preach the truth to people from all over the world. The church grew but for the most part, it was Jewish people who believed and became part of the church. God revealed to Peter in a vision that his plan was to rescue sinners from every nation, tribe, and people group. The Old Testament law had strict rules about which animals could and could not be eaten. The vision that God gave Peter was about more than food, though. God was showing Peter that the gospel is for all people. God's plan all along has been to glorify his name in all the earth. The blessings that God had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were always supposed to be carried through them to the rest of the world, a blessing used to bless others. Jesus, the fulfillment of that promised blessing, had come, lived a perfect life, died the death we deserve, and rose again to defeat death. The time had come for Peter and the other apostles to carry the gospel beyond just the Jewish people to people of all nations. The Bible teaches that all people are born in sin, so we all need a savior. That is why the gospel is so beautiful. The gospel is the good news that God sent his son Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. Not just some sinners, but all sinners who have faith in Jesus. God showed Peter that just as there 
are no clean and unclean foods. There are no clean and unclean people. God calls believers to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they are or where they come from. Jesus is the Lord of all. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you are the Lord of all. Help us to honor you and give you the glory you deserve. All people are made in your image, and we pray for your love to fill us and to help us love everyone around us. Give us courage to tell the world of your love and mercy. Amen. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Lydia from Greenbrier, Arkansas asks, I get along with some people better than others. How am I supposed to not show favoritism? Lydia, that is a great question. And I think the first thing we have to understand is this. It's okay to get along with some people more than other people. It's okay to have some friends that you're closer with and uh, spend more time with. That is totally normal. If you look in the Bible, Jesus even did that. He spent more time with his 12 disciples. He spent more time with three of those disciples in particular, and he had some other really close friends. So there's nothing at all, all wrong with that. Here's what we have to be careful of. It's not showing favoritism toward people. What is favoritism? It's treating people differently. So if you treat people poorly because they're not some of your closest friends, then that would be wrong. That's what we see in our Bible story today, that God does not show favoritism. He treats everybody the same. He loves everybody. And that's what we want to do as well. We want to be at a point where we have some closer friends, nothing wrong with that again, but we love everybody. We're kind to everybody. We want everybody to know Jesus and we respect everybody. That's how we can not show favoritism to people around us. So here's a question back for you. How do you feel knowing that God does not show favoritism?
God showed Peter that just as there is no clean and unclean food, there are no clean and unclean people. God calls believers to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they are or where they come from. Jesus is the Lord of all.